Hi everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about graphing this function y equals square root of x plus 2. Last time, I made the video on graphing the parent function y equals square root of x, and I'm going to use that to talk about how to graph uh, the functions involving the square root of x uh, using transformations. Okay, so we are going to start now and to do transformation. And of course, we need to graph that uh, the parent function first. And then you may say, isn't that taking longer? Well, uh, if you know the general shape and you remember a few key points, that will just make things really quick. So here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start by just graphing the y equals square root of x. And that will be... Um, that will be really easy because we, if we know the shape and the few key points, which are 0, 0, and then 1, 1, and then 4, 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 2. So that's the uh, the third key point right here. And then, of course, you can use more key points if your XY plane is big enough to allow you to plot more points. Now, to make it easier for us to see, I'm just going to label the scale first. Okay, so finish labeling that and you already know the three key points right here and then we also know that the general shape for this function would be this one. So this is our uh, y equals square root of x. Okay, so now um, how do we graph the one with the plus two in it? Well, for this plus two, this plus two right here, it's really just shifting our parent function uh, y equals square root of x, two units upward. And so what does that mean? That means if we just look at those key points. Now let me just make the key points more obvious. And so what that means is that we are going to just move those three points up by two units. Uh, the reason for that is really because when you are adding the two to the square root of x, the square root of x is actually just the same thing as the y value. So our original y values are zero, one, and two. And now adding the two to all those y values will actually only change the y values, but they will not change the x values. Okay, so the x values stay the same, but the y values will be different. So here, if we go up by one, two, and then we are going to get this new point right here. And then here has a y value one, and we move up two units. So we are going to get one, two. So we are going to get the, this second point here. And then now the third point, the third point is one, two, right? So we are going to get this third point right here. And then the shape doesn't really change because we're really just moving the graph, right? So we are going to just get this one. So that's our uh, the graph for this function here. Okay, so and what is that? That is y equals square root of x plus 2. So that's when we're labeling that graph, that's how we label it. Okay, and so that's it for the graphing part. And then now we need to find the domain and the range. Now we're getting finding the domain and the range. It's actually quite simple because we can just look at the graph. And of course, there was a way to find the domain and the range algebraically, but we're not going to do that because we already have the graph. So we can just by find the domain and the range by looking at the graph. And you can see that uh, for the this new graph right here, the lowest point, I mean, well, uh, I should say the leftmost point right here, it's having uh, x value of zero. Well, actually, just l let me just label that point. This is zero, uh, two, right? If you label this point. So if you just look at the x value is zero, so that means we are starting from zero and we are including the zero because zero is also, uh, there is a solid dot right here. So we are going to have starting from zero and then we go all the way, well, it doesn't stop. So we go all the way to infinity as you can see the arrow indicates that the graph will just keep going. Okay, so that is our domain for this function here. And then what about the range? So we're getting the range. The range is when we look at the y values for this graph. Well, the lowest point, now this time is the lowest point. The lowest point for the graph is 2 and it's including the 2. So we are going to start at 2. So we're going to get 2 with the brackets because we're including the 2. And then what about the highest point? There was no highest point because the graph will just keep going up. I know that it, it goes to the right side, but then you know that the graph will just keep going up and up and up and up and up and so on, right? So we are going to get infinity for the range. Yeah, so you compare with that one, the range will be different, but the domain is the same because for the range for the uh, the parent function, the lowest point is having a y value of zero. So the range will be starting from zero instead of the two. 
Okay, so that's it for this problem. I'm going to do another one that is similar to this one, but it's a, a different transformation. Okay, let's continue graphing square root functions with another example here. This time, the plus two is inside the square root compared to uh, the previous example here. And then you may say, how does that work? Well, this plus two right here is actually telling us that we are going to shift the original function, the, I mean, the parent function, so shifting the y equals square root of x, uh, two units to the left. Okay, and so you may say, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that we can simply just use the key points and then move them two units to the left from the original position, right? So now how do we do that? Um, as you can see that I already graphed this one here just to save time so that we don't need to uh, take the time to graph those, right? So you can see that those are still the three key points right here. And then you may say, what should we do? Well, the Y values don't change. As you can see, once we're doing the shifting to the left, so you can see that only the X values are affected for those three key points right here. And of course, all the other points on the graph. So now this one is zero, zero. And if we are moving this point two units to the left, we are gonna get one, two. So we are going to get this point right here. And then, so as you can see that if it has the X value zero, now it's X value is at negative two. Now this one, it has the X value of one. So if we move two units to the left, then we are going to have an X value of negative one for that point. So you can see that that point goes right here. And then this one, same thing. So we are gonna get two units. So starting from four and then now it's at two. Okay, so the shape doesn't change again because we're moving the graph, right? So we are going to just get, we're just gonna get that. So our new graph is y equals square root of x plus two. So now that's it for graphing part. And then we are going to find the domain the range. Now this time, because the x values are affected, as you can see, right? And so we are going to have a different domain. And if you just look at the original one, the leftmost point for this graph is actually having x value zero, but then this time we are going to have x value of what negative two for this one. What happens is that we are starting at negative two. So we are going to start at negative two. Do we include the negative two? Yes, because there was a solid dot right here. In fact, you can plug in the negative two and the function will still be defined, right? It, the function is defined at negative two. So we are going to include the negative two with the brackets, comma, and then we still go all the way to, well, it doesn't, it will just keep on going to the right forever. So go to infinity. And then what about the range? Now the range, um, you can see that the Y values are not, um, are still the same for those three points after you move them. So what happens that we are still getting starting from zero because the lowest point for the graph is zero. And then the highest point, there was no highest point. So infinity. And so that's when we have the domain the range by looking at the graph. Okay, let's look at the next example. Okay, so this time, as you can see that we are gonna have a minus here because so far the two examples that we were just uh, doing were just having a plus two, right? So whether it's outside the function or inside the function, but this time we are gonna have a subtraction. And then how is that different? Well, um, when we have um, plus then for uh, the plus two outside the function, then you can see that we are going to be, well, we're adding the two to the Y value. So that's why we are shifting the graph two units up. And as you can see that this minus two is still outside the function. And what happens right here is that we are shifting the parent function. So shifting the Y equals square root of X two units down. Okay, so what happens is that we are going to just look at the Y values and then we are going to subtract the two from each of those Y values for the key points. And now what happens is that if we look at the Y value for this, it's having a Y value zero and then we are subtracting the two. So we are going to just go down by two units. As you can see, it's that simple. So now this one has a Y value of one and then we subtract two, one, two. So we are gonna get negative one. So we are gonna get this this right here. So as you can see that the X values don't change, right? So they still, we are just moving the dots vertically down. So this one uh, having a Y value two, so move down two units, one, two. So we are gonna get this point right here. Now, 
Uh, the shape doesn't change as you can see because we are really just moving the graph, right? So just just grab it right here, and then um, yeah, so we get the general shape. This one looks a little bit looks a little bit off, right? So I'm just going to just grab it again, so that it looks better. And this is our graph for the function. So y equals square root of x minus two, and so that's it, right? And then now we just need to uh, find the domain and the range. Now the domain. Um, as you can see that it has the same domain as our the, our parent function and so it's starting from zero with the brackets and then to infinity as you can see that it will just go that way and then what happens is that for the range because now our y values are different so you can see that our lowest point for the graph is having a y value of negative two so we are going to start at negative two and then it will just keep going up forever, right? So we will just get infinity for this. And so that's it for all these this three examples. We are going to do a more complicated example next time. So please stay tuned. Please also share and subscribe this channel. I will see you next time.